first thing I want to explain is you'll see us looking at our blackberries, right? and that seems to be rude, and sometimes it is, but sometimes we're actually asking our staffs to get some information to us so we can ask a, a question that becomes quite relevant uh, during your uh, remarks, and I do have one here that I'm going to read to you in a minute. Secondly, I want to make the observation that many members of the committee are somewhat familiar with your situations, and the reason for that is that Chairwoman Velasquez uh, has uh, these roundtable breakfasts, and we have different uh, small business uh, representatives there. So we're familiar with, with the uh, heating, cooling, and, uh, and plumbing industry and what's going on there. Uh, Dr. Orza, we've been familiar with the spillover and domino effect of higher cost of uh, fuels as it affects small business. Mr. Urban Chuck, believe it or not, we've had a hearing on the opportunities presented to small businesses in the expanding biofuels and alternative uh, fuel uh, fields. Mr. Graff, we've heard from the truckers, we've heard from the independents, and I mean, I'm going to be asking you a question of why independents are treated differently, let's say, than the big outfits. And Mr. Uh, Gilberti, Believe me, we do know of, about uh, durable medical equipment and uh, competitive bidding. As a matter of fact, we just had a round table on that. Uh, so I, I think that Chairwoman Velasquez was way ahead of us all. Uh, but it is important today, and I've heard some long-term solutions here. Dr. Orris has touched on it, Mr. Urbanchuk. Uh, yeah, I'm from Texas, so you know I'm an oil and gas guy, and I, I've got uh, my colleague to my left, and I have Oklahoma. So you know where we're coming from many times, but I think Dr. Orris is, gonna, is correct. It's a wide-ranging portfolio of fuel sources, and not to, um, pr I guess, promote one at the expense of another. And we haven't been doing that, and we can go on and on with that. But the truth is, when it comes to ethanol, how many E85 stations do we really have out there? What we have today, we don't have the infrastructure. And these gentlemen here can't wait. They won't be in business by the time that we have that kind of infrastructure when we finally get the cost of producing ethanol at a reasonable price and so on. So I guess what I really uh, want to uh, concentrate on is going to be uh, what can we do immediately? And we have had a couple of suggestions here, such as... Uh, waiving or reducing the, the tax today on, on diesel, for instance, because that's the fuel of choice for most commercial enterprises out there. I don't know how realistic that is at the state level, federal level, and so on. I just don't see that actually happening. And for you to be able to pass it along, whether you're going to have surcharges built in your contracts, that's another issue. The question is, can we help you somehow in expensing it out? Is there something further that this uh, government can do to help you uh, in our tax policies that might assist you immediately um, improving on what you have available to you today? Um, and I don't know what we do about fuel efficient vehicles. To be honest with you, I'm not real sure there are any out there for commercial use. I don't see hybrids out there uh, when it comes to light or heavy duty trucks. I mean, none of that is happening. So it's the here and now. So Mr. Williford, in, is there anything that the federal government can do immediately? And, and that's absent, you know, waiving all the taxes and all that, but that, is there anything with our tax code that we can do to assist you? Representative Gonzalez, <clears throat> pardon me, I frankly don't know. Uh, I think that the, the, the immediate possible remedy that you, could, that you could use in terms of tax policy is uh, perhaps credits for purchasing uh, hybrids. Now, you mentioned that there aren't any for commercial use. That is, in fact, I, I believe correct. However, um, we probably have 40 or 50 project management and overhead vehicles that we use that certainly um, it's, it's not cost efficient right now for us to purchase a hybrid. Um, that would obviously, if, if, if that was made more attractive, we would consider that. Um, th obviously, that would be in terms of, of conservation efforts. Um, but in terms of other uh, items that you could consider from if, in, for, in, in terms of tax policy, I just don't, I just don't know. Thank you. Dr. Orson, any suggestions what we can do immediately? I think, the, unfortunately, the answer is no. You're hearing people tell you they have cash flow problems today. So tax policy changes that they take advantage of at the end of the year when they file their income taxes or, or whatever, or quarterly taxes, doesn't solve a three to four dollar a gallon gas or diesel problem immediately. And, and I think you're hearing that 
you know, from the airline industry is on down to, to trucking companies and, and small businesses that have to drive to do their job. The hybrid solution isn't a solution. First of all, they cost four, five, six, seven thousand dollars more than a regular car or truck. So whatever you save on gas, you spend up front. That didn't solve anything. And by the way, the trucking companies and car companies aren't producing enough of them to even fill demand that there is. Um, I think, again, when I refer back to Congress decided to give everybody a $600 rebate, but you voted on it in January or February, we won't see checks until May. These people can't wait five or six months with gas prices where they are. They need help immediately, and that's why I suggest that the real solution, the near-term solution, is suspension of some gas or, or fuel taxes uh, because it is an immediate impact on their cash flow. Yeah. Uh, the only problem with that is the duration of that timeout and the fact that some, along the way you reimpose it, what are we waiting for to happen in that period of time that will promote some sort of solution for them in the interim? I, I don't have that answer, and, and I hate to disappoint you with that, but I think there has to be some sort of immediate relief, and I'm not sure that you're going to get it with some sort of price controls. I don't know if, if anyone's going to go and suspend the, the gas tax. I think that needs to be viewed actually realistically. Mr. Urbancheck, I know that you're in the bios and, and so on, but these individuals here really can't wait for the development of the technology and uh, the distribution system that would be required to aid them in a, in a lower cost of fuel. Well, I think I, th I think you you provided part of the part of the answer yourself, along with Dr. Orzo, and, and I think in the short term there is very very little that can be done other than emergency actions such as 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 reducing or eliminating part of the federal tax, whether it can be done at the state levels. There there are all kinds of problems associated with that. Um, again, any time you take one action, there are countervailing actions on the other side uh, that, that create additional uh, problems that have to be analyzed. But that short term, as you say, businesses can't wait for the intermediate term. The solution to this is, is, is a medium to long term solution of one, addressing issue of demand, which is being done through the marketplace clearly and technology is improving that, but expanding supply. And that's where the issue of biofuels comes into play, because if you use 10 percent ethanol or you use biodiesel, you are increasing, expanding the supply of motor fuel available. Uh, today, 10 percent ethanol is, is the standard. Whether we get the E85 or not is an open question. I'm not sure that E85 may be the answer. Maybe moving from 10 percent to 15 percent to 20 percent blends of ethanol on a wider basis around the country would expand that availability of motor fuel and help keep pressure, relieve pressure on prices. That's going to take obviously some time to happen. That's an intermediate approach to that. So it's really a combination of, of, of short-term emergency action and then expanding supply as we move forward, both by uh, also a, a addressing the issue of, of domestic production of, of, of oil, that is domestic drilling. But frankly, uh, we have a problem in this country is even if we had more crude oil, we don't have the capacity to turn it into finished products. So we also have to move aggressively at the federal and the state level. My time's running out, and I want to make sure I give Mr. Okay. Graff, Mr. Gilberti uh, an opportunity. Uh, and I'm just talking about the here and now. What are we going to do immediately? I know you're saying suspend the tax, and that's about it. Uh, Mr. Graff, real quick, I just want to tell you that what you asked a question, why is diesel costing so much more? And we, uh, in San Antonio, we've got Valero and Tesoro, and they're refiners. And I just want to tell you basically what they're always telling us. Price of crude is still a large factor. Number two, process and refining of diesel is now more expensive than processing gasoline. This is due to the fact that diesel has to meet new low sulfur spe specifications, and it is more expensive process to meet those specifications. Diesel has been more expensive generally since 2004. Higher federal excise tax on diesel, six cents per gallon but truly cost of oil and refining costs to meet low sulfur are largest drivers of cost of diesel. So I thought I would tell you that's what I was doing with my BlackBerry. But what do you want us to do? For, because it's really the trucking industry that's hurting the most. Eliminate it. Eliminate your uh, refining process for, your, tr for uh, your tree huggers are the ones that are pushing it. Get rid of your lo ultra low sulfur diesel, make it one diesel and eliminate the process, which will, in, right there they told you, that's the reason that the diesel is higher than the gasoline, eliminate it. Eliminate that process. We didn't have it for years, and now you're seeing these prices, they're telling you that's why the diesel is more than gas, eliminate the process today. Mr. Liberty? 
Uh, as I can't speak to the, the, the uh, uh, refining costs of diesel. Um, we don't, our trucks don't use diesel. We use generally smaller, smaller vehicles. What can we do for you to, to assist you in the short term what while we can try do to, to us, long term? A little selfishly in our industry, because we're, our, our reimbursement is regulated by Medicare and Medicaid, we could hope for some sort of maybe fuel allowance in those, in those reimbursement rates. Um, and that doesn't help some of these other industries, but at least in our industry it would help us.